Now, how do we know this in actuality? What's a proof that we can see every day? Every day you can see a proof, mamash, 100%. I tell people, anyone wants proof of the Satan, just come watch a shield. Look at how many distractions there is in every shield. The camera goes upside down. This one calls, that one calls, the camera breaks, this one, everything. Mamash, the whole week everything works except during the shield. So this is another way you can actually see the Yetzirah live. How do you know the Yetzirah doesn't want you to learn Torah? And he actually wants you to work. When was the last time you tried learning Torah, but something happened? Right before you learned Torah. Something happened. You wanted to learn Torah, but flat tire. You wanted to learn Torah, but all of a sudden the kids are crying. You wanted to learn Torah, all of a sudden your spouse is yelling at you. You want to learn Torah, you can't find your shoes. You want to learn Torah, you lost the book. You want to learn Torah, the computer doesn't work. You want to learn Torah, it's Hurricane Irma. Irma came for why? You want to learn Torah first time in 10 years. You want to learn Torah, Irma came. You want to learn Torah. But when was the last time you had Yitzhak not to work? Oh, honey, I'm going to work overtime. Yitzhak ever interfered? No. Go work overtime. Go work the rest of the year, honey. Go, go, work, work, work. We need the money. Well, honey, we have $10 million in the bank. Yeah, we need it. We need it for school. Yet Sarah never interferes with work. Go work forever. Stay there. Just don't learn Torah. The Yet Sarah will never interfere with your job. Never. Because he wants you to stay there. He wants you to occupy yourself with work and with the mundane things of this world so you stay away from Torah. Why? Because work keeps you away from him. Torah is the poison against him. It's the potion that kills him. So that's why Rabbi Ephraim says, the Satan will never ever disturb you from business and he'll prefer for you to go work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not six days, no Shabbat. Seven days a week, work on Shabbat too. Why? It's not Torah. As long as it's not Torah, go do it. That's mamash, a proof you can see every day. Go try it. Try it at home. Try this. This is mamash, a proof. You go. You want to learn Torah? Watch how many interferences you have before you want to watch your Torah. How many interferences before you want to, honey, I want to go to Shiur. She didn't talk to you the whole day. She didn't talk to you. She didn't say nothing the whole day. Honey, I'm going to Shiur. Oh, no, but I needed you. What do you mean? I've been at home for 12 hours. You didn't say you needed nothing. You didn't say hello yet. Good morning. I, I was been up. No, I needed you. Why? I gotta go to Shul Torah. I'm sorry, I need you now. For what? You end up sitting there at home waiting for her to tell you what to do? Four hours. You could have been to Shul Torah and come back home already. But Yitzharat sent, what happened? You went to your wife to go to you. Or the opposite. Or the kids. Or the car. Or all of a sudden your boss calls you. Hey, listen, I need you in the office. When? Now. What do you mean? It's 8 o'clock at night. I need, to, I need to go to Shul Torah right now. No, 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 we need to, we have a closing, we have a this, we have a deal, we have a that. You got to come in. But it's 8 o'clock at night. I have a family, I have, it doesn't matter, you have to come in. He puts pressure on you, making you feel like you're going to lose your job. So you're not going to lose your job. You're not going to lose your job. All you're going to lose is Shul Torah. That's all you're going to lose. But that's Yetzirah. Uh, Mamash, try this at home. Watch, you open a book, all of a sudden you're tired. Before you open the book, you were like a bull. You were able to rip trees with your teeth out of the ground. Open a Sefer Gemara, open Chumash, open anything all of a sudden. Like Mama says, like a plague on you, you're dying. You want to be sleeping, you can't, you can't move. Pain, tooth pain, ear pain, this pain, that pain. Why? You open Sefer Torah. All of a sudden you're like narcoleptic. You know, narcolepsy is, is uh, people have the uh, disease. They talk to you, talk to you, all of a sudden, boop, they fall asleep. All day you are alive like a lion, open Sefer Torah, do, fall asleep like a baby. I don't know why they say fall asleep like a baby. These babies don't fall asleep. They don't sleep. My babies go to sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning. They, I'm competing with them. They don't sleep. I don't know why they say sleep like a baby. My babies don't sleep, God bless them. I think the guy that made the quote never had any kids. That's what happened. <laughs> never had any kids. So, Rabbi Meir tells you basics. Base, you see all these Mishnayot are very basic. Very basic principles of Torah. 
he says less work moto why the the prime reason for your existence is learning and following Torah business Hashem is gonna give it to you one way or another never turn your life to such an extent which unfortunately all of us are victims of where business becomes priority and Torah becomes secondary our goal in life is to make Torah priority in business something we do in order to learn Torah that's the goal in life the goal in life is not to make business priority it's to make Torah priority now this is very hard for people because the Satan convinces you with genius arguments he says listen it's very nice this rabbi is telling you go learn Torah and uh, no business and less business and all business but hey who pays for the CDs that he has who pays for the organization Bezat Hashem who pays for the rent who pays for the car who pays for the food he needs money even him not talking about themselves talking about he needs money so people donate if they don't work there's no donations so if I work so now he's now the Yitzhak goes a step further he goes Z maybe people are not donating much so I have to work extra so I can give him more donation because if I a million times I've heard this once I become rich I'm gonna donate all my money to Kiruv once I have this million dollars ten million dollars hundred million dollars whatever million zillion dollar dreams that people have once I have that I'm gonna donate zillions half of it I'm gonna give to Kiruv oh, I bought this lot of Kvodarav oh great how much is it it's 500 million dollars well psh, good luck to you no, no, you should, you should, you should pray for this. Why? Half of it's going to you. I'm in. I'm in. One time, there was a guy who came to a rabbi. He says, Kvodarav, I want you to pray for me. To your God, that I win this lotto ticket, ten million dollars. He says, No problem. I'll pray for you. A week passes, nothing. He didn't win. What happened? Sometimes our prayers are not answered. Sometimes Hashem says no. Because what kind of God is this? No, pray for me. I'm harder. Fine, fine, fine. Listen, Kvodarav, I'll up the ante. Last time I said I was going to give him our sale. I was going to give one million. This time, tell him I'm giving you half. Rabbi says, I'm in. No problem. I'll pray. He goes, I'm giving you half, Kvodarav. No problem. Praying. Five million to me, five million to you. Shutafim. We're partners. No problem. Praying for you all week. Gemara, toss for everything. I'm going to learn for you. Another week passes, no money. The guy says, ah, this guy's not serious. He goes to the uh, church, Abu Dazara over there. He goes, hey, uh, priest, go, you know, put down your idol for a second. Come over here. He goes, yeah, I was uh, just uh, washing uh, JC. He had some uh, syrup on his eyes. We pretended like it was blood. What happened? Yes, I want you to pray for me. So I win the lotto. I give half to the church. No problem. I pray for you. Next day, jackpot. $10 million. The guy, the next day, he's driving in his brand new car. And he passes by the church. And he passes by the synagogue. And his friend is in the car. And as soon as he passes by the church, he looks at it. And he looks at the, you know, says, you know, like this. And he looks at the uh, synagogue, he starts laughing. His friend says, why are you laughing? He goes, ah, the God of Israel is not a sucker. He, knows I'm not, he knew I'm not going to pay. <laughs> the God of Israel, is not, he's not, he knew I'm not going to pay. That's a good one. So, that's the thing. So, everybody says, listen, once I make this deal, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to give money to Kiruv. I'm going to save Neshamot, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, da, 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 da. But I have a question for you. What makes you think, what part of the Torah did you learn that makes you think that your Yetzirah is not going to grow with your bank account? What makes you think that your desire, right now, 100%, you say you're going to give, you, right now, I believe you, right? But I believe you that if you had it, you'd give. But you don't have it, that's why you have no Yetzirah for it. What makes you think that your Yitzah doesn't change with your bank account? What makes you think that once you have the money, you're still going to want to give just like you wanted to give when you didn't have? Everybody says, I'm going to give what I don't have. One guy, they came to him, they said, listen, 
We want to make sure that you are uh, worthy of being one of the uh, sergeants of the Caesar. Okay, ask. What do you need? We need to see your loyalty. No problem. What? Because your donkey. Would you give it to the Caesar? No problem. Give it to him right away. Your cow. Your cow. You give it to the Caesar? No problem on the spot. You ask, I give. Okay, good. So far, so good. Your chicken. You give your chicken, he goes, hey, no, no, no chicken, no chicken. Not giving you no chicken. Like, this guy is crazy. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Give the cow. Give the donkey. I give a chicken. They throw him out. Like, this guy doesn't even have a profile. You know, the profile, they try to test the profile from 1 to 10. This guy's not even a 1. He's like, wait, the donkey, the chick. What's wrong with you? They kick him out. One of his friends asked him outside. He goes, what's wrong with you? The donkey, the cow, you give, but chicken you wouldn't give? I mean... If anything, it should be the opposite. Because no, no, listen, let me tell you something. Donkey, I don't have. Cow, I don't have. Chicken, I have. I'm not giving him my chicken. Something I don't have, I give it to them any time. I have a donkey. I don't have a donkey. Take it, though. Cow, I don't have. They want to give me a cow, I'll give it back to them. No problem. But my chicken, I'm getting my chicken. I'm not giving my chicken. People want to give away the stuff they don't have all the time. All the time they want to give it. I'll give you a million, I'll give it. No, but that's not the test. Hashem says now is the test. Now, now you're making $500 a week. Now it's time to give Marcel. That's the test. So, Rabbi Meir says, listen, you're trying to overwork because you think that if you make more money, you're going to give more to Torah or you're going to be able to learn more Torah. Who says? Who says you're right? Yet Sarah changes with your bank account. Your Yetzirah changes with your bank account. He's going to grow with the bank account. So you think that you're going to make more money and therefore you're going to have more time to retire. You're going to say, listen, I'm going to work 20, 30 years for my pension. Once I'm on pension, I'm leaving everything. I'm only learning to offer morning to night. Yetzirah shows up in your pension party. He says, hey, how are you? He goes, oh, what are you doing here? You were with me for 30 years. He goes, no, 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 I left you alone for 30 years. You are working. I didn't bother you. He goes, what are you doing here now? He goes, now I'm here for the stay. Now I'm here for the retirement. To make sure you don't learn one ounce of Torah. That's the Yetzirah. Don't try to fool him. It doesn't work. Only way is give him the portion of Torah when it's hard for you. When the kids are crying, when the wife is complaining, when the husband doesn't want, when da, 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 all this stuff, that's when you learn Torah. That's when you learn Torah. It's not supposed to be easy. And to think that if you have more money, it's going to change things, it's not going to change anything. It's going to make it more hard. More difficult. So that's the first rule. Rabbi Meir says very, very simple. Very simple, but very difficult at the same time. It's very simple, but very, very difficult. Why? Because Yetzirah, you can't see him unless you look for him.